We're coming to you from NCBA's Washington, D.C. office, located just a short distance from both Capitol Hill and the White House. We're here to celebrate National Ag Day, a day when we say thank you to the farmers and ranchers that provide food, feed, and fiber for the world while preserving and protecting the resources in their care. Today, we're going to talk to NCBA's DC staff to get their thoughts on a wide range of important policy issues and also learn how they share the message in Washington that U.S. beef production is both efficient and sustainable. And joining me now is Ethan Lane, Vice President of Government Affairs at the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Ethan, what does Ag Day look like here in our nation's capital? Well, for us here in Washington, the real important job is to remind lawmakers from all over the country that may not have agriculture in their district that a small handful of dedicated families around the country ensure that every time you walk to the refrigerator and open it, it's full of food. And every time you go to the diner, there's a hamburger waiting for you. And, and it's a really important opportunity to not just remind them of that, but remind them what we need to keep doing that day after day, drought, hurricanes, rain, heat, cold, all of the, the, the different forces that our producers overcome to put that food on a table every day really comes down to their tenacity and a little help from Washington to both stay out of the way mm -hmm. and, and be there in those, in those few times that we do need them. You know, we hear a lot from this administration about the environment. And I'm curious, uh, how have conversations changed with the Biden administration as it relates to both the environment and the beef cattle industry? So I think we've come a long way from the, the bad old days of, of cattle grazing and cattle production being a, a villain in the climate story. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, some of that is our own industry, uh, I think, getting a little more comfortable talking about what a good job we mm -hmm. do, not being afraid of that conversation. Mm -hmm. But there's also a much better understanding in, in the scientific community and the research community about just how in essential cattle production is, what grazing does for the environment, what you give up. If we're not out there every day managing those resources and, and using those grasslands the way that they were intended to be used. Mm -hmm. So that that different evolving understanding is leading to better policy decisions, uh, a conversation here in Washington that's more focused on voluntary incentive-based climate action rather than the force of regulation or, you know, uh, at the point of a gun, which is not what we want in that kind of deal. We want, we want our producers to want to be engaged in that. We want them to make more money. We want them to do better. We want their environment to be more vigorous. And, and we do that through incentivizing change, not, not forcing it. You talk about conversations. You have a wonderful staff here in Washington, D.C. Tell us about some of the things you do to educate both the White House and lawmakers about the sustainability of the beef industry. Sure. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you got to lay that groundwork early. You have to build those relationships and you have to build trust with lawmakers and folks in the administration, you know, career officials at USDA or the Department of Interior. They need to know year over year that this office and the experts that represent the, the cattle industry are a wealth of information on any given day mm -hmm. on, on topics throughout the, uh, the, the federal government. So that when those big ticket issues come up, we're ready to go in and, and, and help them understand how we might be impacted by, say, an issue that maybe on first glance doesn't have an impact on the cattle industry. You know, when you talk about taxes for the Build Back Better plan that was being mm -hmm. contemplated last year, you don't typically immediately think about agriculture right. until you see how they were intending to pay for it. And then all of a sudden, it's really important for our team to get up on Capitol Hill and help lawmakers understand exactly why we're able to build these operations that are big enough to feed the world and how we hold on to them generation over generation. You talk about building relationships with lawmakers. Let's talk about the kinds of things you all do to build relationships, both with lawmakers and also regulators. Those are two really different audiences here in DC, but you work in building relationships with both, don't you? We, we do, it's essential because, you know, Congress passes the laws and, and then the executive branch implements them. And a lot of times those are career government officials that have been here 20, 30, 40 years. And it's amazing when you get to know them, how much they know about these different areas. I mean, they've, they've dedicated their lives and sometimes to sure. one hallway at USDA. <laughs> so, you know, it's really important for us to make sure that we've got both sides of that equation. So whether it's, you know, implementing uh, farm bill programs and, and making sure that we're getting disaster assistance out where it needs to go, um, or talking about producer education for risk management programs, any of those things, it really takes that hand in glove between the intent of Congress mm -hmm. and then the actual practical application of that intent when it comes over to the, to the executive branch side. 
You know, we always talk about the benefit of having actual boots on the ground here in Washington, D.C. In a post-pandemic world where we spend a lot of time on Zoom calls and telephone calls and so forth, can you point to any specific examples where having actual boots on the ground and being resident here in D.C. has made a substantial difference? Every single day since the pandemic began, this office has had the lights on and lobbyists hard at work, mm -hmm. making sure that the cattle industry's views are represented here in Washington. And every single day since the pandemic began, that's been important. We've had face-to-face -face interactions. We've hosted meetings on the rooftop when we weren't able to inside. Mm -hmm. We've been up on Capitol Hill. We've had coffee meetings. We've gone on walks you know, out in the outside with members of Congress when we couldn't be in a building with them. We've had those opportunities to, to have an ongoing dialogue mm -hmm. rather than scheduling a Zoom call. And anyone who's been working remotely for the last couple of years knows that as convenient as that has been, you know, the hallway conversation and, and that, that just sort of passing interaction um, that, that only happens when you're in one place together for a long period of time yeah. really is lost. And, and that's true in Washington, too. It's a really big city, but at the end of the day, it's a pretty small town. Thank you so much for joining us on this show. You bet. Welcome to Washington. Thank you. Now, a great way you can support NCBA's work in Washington, D.C., defending and advocating for the cattle industry is to become a member. It's easy to do. Just call toll-free 1-866-233-3872, or you can visit the website ncba.org.